exit of foreign portfolio investors from the Nigerian capital markets. Stakeholders in the market say there's need for more engagement between capital market operators and regulators. They believe this can help address the dwindling liquidity challenge, among other things, in the Nigerian securities market. At a joint forum of operators in Lagos, participants were optimistic that domestic investors' attitude towards Nigerian securities could improve if the Capital Markets Committee removes investment hurdles and bottlenecks in the market. I think the fact that we are in different trade groups is really um, something that SEC devised, if you like, as a way of managing communication with the various people that SEC regulates. So it's easy for SEC to be able to um, pass on information to the various trade groups through the trade groups. So you know that if you sent a message to CMSA, then it's gone to all your solicitors and so on. But that group is convenient for that, but I do think that there needs to be some other group whereby we are all, um, regardless of our area of expertise or our practice area, all of us operating within the capital markets communicate more um, consistently. Um, I believe that the Capital Market Committee can can work in the same role that the Bankers Committee works for the bank. So basically, if there's an issue in the banking industry, the Bankers Committee with the central bank together tackle the issue and add, uh, consult with whoever needs to be consulted. They go as high as the presidency to ensure that their issues are resolved. Well, the Nigerian equities market closed further south at the end of the midweek session as four out of the five sector indices recorded losses. The all share index dropped by 0.10% to close at 27,287.89, while market capitalization decreased by 8.98 billion naira to 9.38 trillion naira. BC Adebayo reports that total volume traded increased by 150.03%. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Reports. Losses continued at the Nigerian equities market today as the key benchmark index moved further south, losing 0.10% to end the midweek session at 27,287.89. Market capitalization also settled lower at 9.38 trillion naira. Forte Oil, Seplet and Nestle were the top three price losers for the day. The equities lost 5%. 4.61% and 0.37% respectively. Unilever was top on the price gainers list with a 10.23% increase. The equity ended the session at 43 Naira 98 Kaba. Wapco and Total also gained 2.40% and 1.33% respectively. Guaranteed Trust Bank, Union Homes and FBN Holdings were the major volume drivers for the session. When the closing gong sounded, investors had exchanged 383.38 million shares valued at 5.34 billion naira in 2,857 deals. And that ends the stock market reports. I am BC Adebayo. Well, thanks, BC. Now, in the final hours to the ECB rates decision, the European markets are already reacting, particularly with the latest Eurozone inflation data. DWTV Channel's TV correspondent Conrad Bussen reports that investors are already nervous, mainly because of the uncertainty of the outcome of the Fed Chief Janet Yellen's speech tonight. That you uh, see right behind me, right uh, over my shoulder, shows quite obviously how nervous investors are ahead of all these events. And let's take a closer look at this graph. What you can see here is an upswing this morning at around about 11 o'clock, and this happened right after the latest inflation data from the eurozone came in. Consumer price inflation in November rose by only 0.1%. That's less than what economists had forecast, and it is also far less. 
than what uh, the European Central Bank considers to be price stability. So uh, this negative or that very low consumer price inflation of course makes the speculation on further monetary stimulus from the Central Bank more likely and that's why this positive reaction happened. But then the optimism went away quite quickly and let me link that to the other event of today. Yellen is going to speak tonight in Washington, uh, tonight of course, uh, meaning uh, Lagos time or Frankfurt time and uh, it's of, uh, of course not clear what uh, Yellen has to say. say will the Fed uh, chairwoman announce uh, an increase of interest rates in the United States soon, maybe as early as December and if so, what will the consequences be for the markets? That's what makes uh, investors nervous at the moment. Well, thanks so much, Conrad. But let's take a look at those figures now and see how investors are actually reacting, waiting for Janet Yellen's announcement. Very cautious numbers, but we'll keep our eye on that. But that's it on Business News tonight. I'm Harriet Agbini. The rest of the news at 10 continues in just a moment. You first. First Bank. Now let's go back to our community report from Benue State. Now you're talking. It is also the biggest yam market in West Africa. People come from all over the country and the rest of West Africa to purchase yams here. We operate here from Monday to Saturdays every week between late September to early July on weekly basis. And we load not less than 70 to 100 vehicles on daily basis. Traders move from various states with, across the country to come here to buy. As you can see, like these people in particular, they are going to rivers. The other people there, they are going to Bini. Mr. Moses Ani, a truck driver, takes yam from here to the eastern part of the country. At times, two, two trips every week. Where is your destination? My destination is um, uh, Abia State, okay. Aba. Like all this yam, any any fruit, any crops, food crops, we do carry it from this uh, this Zakeb yam, which is Benue State. With over a hundred truckload of yams moved from Zakeb yam to different parts of the country, one challenge the farmers face is the issue of processing and storing. The state government, through its Agricultural Revolution program, is looking at ways of addressing the challenge. Farmers produce a lot of these crops, but they find it difficult in adding value to it because they are not, they are taken to the market in a raw form without value addition. Our government in Benue State is looking at the agriculture driven. Uh, industrialization and we want to fix this missing uh, link the gap so we are introducing uh, industries and we also create uh, export uh, companies that we purchase these products from the Benue farmers process it package it this yam flour processing factory in Casinala is one of the interventions of the government. When completed, it has a production capacity of 60 metric tons of yam per day, producing about 20 tons of flour. You bring yam here and they take it, you know, process it. The farmer is getting value for the yam he's selling. 
At the same time, the, the products are also being sold locally and also being exported. Economists believe the agriculture sector will be best served as a viable source of revenue for the economy when more attention is paid to crops such as this. Next on the news at 10, Vladimir Klitschko attempts to regain heavyweight title, seeks a rematch with new champion Tyson Fury. That's on Sports News. Please stay with us. Time now for Sports News and here's Charles Eruka. This is the ultimate, redefined for men. Welcome to Sports News. Nigeria's Dream Team 6 will have to wait until their final group game to seal a place in the CAF Under-23 Championships after the junior Pharaohs of Egypt forced them to a two-all draw. Two quick penalty goals from Waru Wolves forward Ogene Karetebo gave Samson Siasia's boys a comfortable two-goal lead in the first half. But the team's defensive problems resurfaced when the Egyptians pulled one goal back as soon as action resumed in the second half. Later on, goalkeeper Emmanuel Daniel helped the ball into his own net for the Egyptians to level scores. Nigeria's next game will be on Saturday against group leaders Algeria who beat Mali 2-1. Here. Leading sponsors of soccer's world governing body have demanded independent oversight of FIFA's reform process in an open letter addressed to FIFA before a key meeting to finalize proposed reforms at the scandal plagued organization. FIFA's Reform Committee Chairman Francois Carrad will put uh, its recommendations to the Executive Committee and they'll be publicly presented afterwards. Former heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko has decided to take up the contractual option for a rematch against Tyson Fury following his defeat in Dusseldorf on Saturday night. Klitschko lost his WBA Super, WBO and IBF heavyweight titles when he was beaten on points by Fury at the Esprit Arena. The Ukrainian confirmed after the fight that the rematch close existed, but there was speculation before then that he would decide to retire after his 11-year 22 fight on beaten streak ended. And that's it on Sports News. It's back to Bimbo with the rest of the news at 10. This is the ultimate redefined for men. Reports reaching us indicate that 100 members of the Boko Haram sect have been killed in Cameroon and 900 people previously held hostage rescued by the country's military. According to the AFP, Cameroon Army spokesman Colonel Didier Bajek said troops had conducted a sweep operation between November 26 and 28 along Cameroon's long border with Nigeria. The Nigerian military has, however, not confirmed the incident. Well, it was a rowdy session today at the British Parliament as members argued for and against David Cameron's proposal of UK's military involvement in Syria. And the main news again. The Chief Justice of Nigeria today vowed to rid the judicial system of corrupt officers as newly appointed judges took the oath of office. And that brings us to the end of the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Do keep another date with us tomorrow. Same time, same station. I'm Bimbo Good night.